Hello, I'm OPX Toy Cat, and in the first two months of 1.21 snapshots and betas, we've seen every announced feature come to the game already, with the exception of one, which changes today because the armadillo has just rolled into the latest 1.21 preview for Minecraft Bedrock, alongside the Scute and the Wolf armor. These are incredibly exciting features, but I want to answer the question of what is the point of the armadillo? Can you tame one? What's going on? Is the wolf armor actually protective? And more importantly, what about the crab and the penguin? Today I'll answer all of those questions while diving into the new command, the new world edit screen, and the trial chambers change which has been made in this very same beta and preview, which I should mention at the very onset. Not only is the armadillo very cute, but he's actually technically not a part of update 1.21 as far as these toggles are concerned. Right now it's part of a separate toggle that you'll have to enable, and there are so many of these toggles, right? But it's worth mentioning that that doesn't mean this isn't a part of 1.21 necessarily, it just means it's not necessarily definitely a a part of it too. Speaking of definitely a part of it, look how cute these guys are. Let's give an overview of the armadillo and I'm going to find it very hard not to just stop and say, oh, isn't it adorable? Something Minecraft does well when they design a mob is they generally know how to make it cute and every time I look at this guy, I'm just like, oh, isn't he cute to follow through the world? And isn't it cute to notice that actually they have a few interesting behaviors. One of these is they'll roam around the world. Another is that if you sprint near them, they'll go into a bull. This is something they do when a threat is detected. It makes them a bit more powerful against it. And the other interesting thing that they'll do is fall in love if you give them spider eyes. Look how cute that was. They walked into each other, but spider eyes is their food of choice, which is something I think is very smart. Spider eyes don't currently have a whole lot of use, but you'll soon want them if you want armadillos. But why would you want armadillos? Well, I think you can probably guess the main reason. Obviously, uh, there is a scute that can be obtained from these guys, and they seem to drop them naturally every now and then. But also, if you have a brush or a dispenser, you can force them to drop them manually. It takes up a lot of durability though. Wow, that I, I just got a brand new brush and I got five armadillo scutes out of it. I'm not sure if that's broken, but <laughs> I don't have enough to craft uh, armor anymore. Okay, I made another brush to confirm. This is just the durability you use. Five scutes is all you get for a single brush. I've never seen an activity that damages something this much. Even putting unbreaking on there just lowers your chance of damaging it. And so you're ultimately still only going to get about 20 scutes for one of these, which is insane to say the least. However, that brings us nicely onto the armadillo scute. So unlike the regular scute, as we now have to call it, which is used to craft a turtle helmet, this scute can only be used to craft one thing, and it's not necessarily for humans. So if you take seven of these scutes to a crafting table, and you make a fun H shape, but not like a capital H, like a ladder, a lowercase h, you'll be able to get a piece of wolf armor. And fun fact about this wolf armor, it is in fact entirely unstackable. So if you try to make multiple pairs of it, it will go into different slots. Then the wolf armor itself doesn't seem to be customizable and in see instead seems to be a one-size-fits-all approach which is convenient because there's only one size of dog. So the armadillo is very cute and it drops a scute that can be used to make your wolf a lot stronger but only you get to decide you're going to do this. Fun fact, only the player who tamed a wolf gets to put wolf armor on it. If you find someone else's wolf in a world you can't decide that then it should be armored up in any way and that is an interesting distinction to make. Also, like I mentioned, there is no way to customize it you can still customize a dog's collar even after you put the armor on, but the armor itself is non-customizable. You just have two choices on and off. And fortunately, you don't have to go through any nightmare to uh, find out, you know, to get your dog armor off, because instead you shear the armor and it comes right off. So you can use it on your red dog, because maybe the blue dog, get dog gets to stay inside and uh, do nothing and uh, still get fed, while red dog has to go out and actually earn his keep. And in that case, maybe it's better that he has the wolf armor. So yeah, Wolf armor is still called wolf armor, even though it only works on dogs and only your dogs be precise. And interestingly, even though it is using shears, you can't shear it off your dog and you can't apply it onto your dog using uh, these dispensers, which I just think is a very interesting feature. Speaking of very interesting features, um, I think it should be worth mentioning the strength of wolf armor was one of my first questions. And Minecraft themselves put this line on the changelog saying it's equivalent to diamond horse armor, but that's not very specific. I think most people don't know the strength of diamond horse armor, or honestly, most people don't use horse armor, and when they do, they barely even notice the difference. And so, how strong is the dog armor? I had to, I, I, I wish Mojang could have just told us this. I don't like that I had to do the science myself. Let's not question what my methods are, but let's just say I counted and I worked out that a regular dog can withstand 20 hits from a fist 
who knows whose fists, whereas a dog with dog armor can withstand 35. That is about a 75% increase in its effective health because its damage is being decreased by something like, uh, you know, like a 40% or so. And so that means that ultimately you get a big bonus and your dog is less likely to die. A piece of damage that would deal four hearts to him instead will deal three. And this makes a big difference for most forms of death. However, a lot of the time a dog will die in something that does a lot more than 35 damage. And so if something was going to do greater than 35 damage anyway, the dog still will die. Ultimately, a lot of the dog armor is going to be about this, you know, like instinct to defend your dog. And also, uh, more importantly, it's going to be a fun level of customization. This shows you don't just have a house dog. This shows you have a dog that goes out and about on actual adventures and that you want to protect him from those things. Or maybe you'll see it as stylish dog clothing, although the word stylish definitely can't be used when describing this, right? I mean, I don't want to say it's ugly or anything, but it's definitely not the opposite of ugly, and uh, keep that in mind with the wolf armor. It is very much function over form, I guess. <laughs> it is very functional, but maybe is not the best fitting. So you know what? I'm gonna let my dog not have any armor because he looks a bit cuter, and if something bad happens, then I'm gonna blame someone else. Speaking of blaming someone else, I think this is an important transition into why we have the armadillo altogether. Because, um, and by the way, I should mention, the armadillo does have some cute behaviors, as you, we, we mentioned. He curls up into a bull, um, but he will not do that. Uh, or in, Indeed, when he isn't a bull, you can't shear him, and also so uh, he's more resistant, but all, and it also can't be bred, but he won't be doing that if you bring yourself a lead. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to run into this biome. I'm going to scare a, uh, a, an armadillo, but the armadillo, if you choose to make him a pet, won't have the same thing happen because while he's in water, while he's in the air, and while he's led around, he won't have any issues. Is my armadillo gone? Oh, here he is. <laughs> oh, he's cute. He's got a baby too. Let's let you know. Okay, very adorable. So, yeah, I'm going to take the baby with me. Um, you know, it's okay. I made this baby so I can have him. And you'll notice how even if I sprint around him, his parent will curl up into a ball. It's so cute. But he will not. Okay, I have to do a transition to talking about real things. I would love to just drag an armadillo on a lead around all day. But while I work on answering the question of how good they are as pets, and indeed a Minecraft mob, I think it's important to talk about the rest of the preview. This is not just an armadillo that has come out. Instead, they've made quite a few interesting changes changes. One of these is 4K support for the Series X. Right now, Microsoft's own premier console, the Xbox Series X, does not run Minecraft in 4K. Uh, this is something they're changing. I think this is a very positive change. Uh, I do feel as though the console versions of Minecraft have suffered a bit under bedrock, and it's cool to see them slowly putting this right. Although, for what it's worth in this current preview, there is also a bug that means that your controller tooltips don't go away. Oh, and speaking of bugs, there's also a crash that would occur when switching dimensions. There was an issue where zombies couldn't pick up full stacks. That's a very interesting one. And they also made a bunch of fixes to cases of unexpected full damage. You can see three separate bugs of unexpected full damage, hopefully meaning that you won't just be playing Minecraft and randomly take some damage. One of the worst things and definitely one of the worst ways to die. Uh, people do call it Minecraft bug rock and I love to see that Minecraft is making a big attempt on fixing that. Every single preview, every single beta, every minor update brings us a little closer. You would hope at least. They also fix a fair few trial chamber related issues from the last few betas and previews, such as exposed weather and oxidized copper bulbs in trial chambers now spawning in wax, trial spawners randomizing the loot table only once for each combat but for all players, uh, an issue with wax copper grate transparency, and finally the breeze, wind, and wind charge rendering have been tweaked. Very mysterious, huh? But they've also made quite a few changes to the realms menu and to the user interface more broadly, and let me show you exactly what those look like. So this is the screen that you'll see when you go to one of your worlds and you press this little edit button to the side. Uh, right now, this is how you edit anything about the world, and this is what it looks like currently. As you can see, it's a lot of different settings on this main screen, and then there's multiplayer, resources packs, and behavior packs. That Now in the new design, I actually don't know. I'm going to hit this, and we're going to experience it for the first time. Uh, we're going to see exactly what happens. Go to new design about saving. Heck yeah. So this is what the new design looks like. It's kind of like the world creation screen, except it's for editing your existing worlds. So most of the things are, you know, you've probably seen this somewhere in your world before just now. It works exactly as you would expect. The one big uh, thing that's really changed 
changed here is that the main tab has been split into general, advanced, and then experiments. There are also, I guess, cheats is also separate. They have separated out lots of things into their own submenus so that now if you want to do the file management stuff, it's much, much easier. I cannot tell you how many people do not actually know that you can duplicate a world by just hitting this button. It makes a brand new world called copy off and oh, uh, there's, there's a new screen for this too. Also, I never knew this took take so long. Usually it just instantly happens. Uh, but yeah, you can hit duplicate and it will make a copy of your world unless you're in the new menu, in which case it might might lead you. Oh, there we go. Oh, duplicated. And then you can see, oh, it's not, this isn't even, it doesn't say copy anymore. It's a pure copy, except it says one on the side here. Oh, so they made a big change to that. That is actually really cool in my opinion. But also we have the ability to delete a world. It's red now, so you're less likely to do it by mistake. And the ability to export is also incredible. This will allow you to share the MC world file and allow someone to download it, despite them not being on the same device as you. Very, very, very handy one. I would show you this, but it's a Windows menu. And I'll show you this this one by hitting delete where it will confirm the world will be gone forever makes me hit another red button and then boom oh it takes a bit for that too but then boom it says deleted and all of a sudden we've got a brand new, well we're just back to one world but we could do this over and over again if we want to by the way duplicate 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 again and again and again something i love is this ability to say last played i don't know if this is just cool graphics or if this is a new feature but right now um the, you know the world will tell you when it was last edited so if i go to the third lp world um that was when i played on the oh that was for monday's video actually but if i go to deferred pbr survival you actually let's go to this world. Uh, I last played it on the 11th but because I edit it it goes up to the top of my list right here uh, except now that looks like that's been changed and so if we scroll down there it says last played 11th of December. To really confirm that though let's quickly change the title uh, so let's make it deferred LPU world and let's see yep save changes. That now says 12.13 on my list will it say 12.13 here? Um, it does. Okay, well, it's lying. I didn't last play this world. You all saw me. I didn't load that up. But yeah, this is a brand new thing. There are also some changes to realms, as you can see by this new set of setting over here. They're making the realm stories more visible. That is this icon over here. I don't have any realm stories because I play on my realm by myself. You know, that's that's my issue, isn't it? Let's, let's make a realm story. Um, I am feeling good because I just subscribed... To IBX Toy Cat. Uh, did you know that's the way that you would find the latest source of update news and information, just like you're watching right now? Wow, subscribe to IBX Toy Cat sure is great, and I would like to share that with. <laughs> <laughs> with the rest of my world. See, every time I load up my world now, I'll be able to see this ad from IBX Toy Cat. Speaking of ads for IBX Toy Cat, I should just quickly mention that the Armadillo is technically a neutral mob. That means that if you do- oh no, oh no, I, I should not have done this. But fun fact, it is technically just a neutral mob, although if you attack it, it doesn't attack you back. Um, but what is also neutral is my opinion on the new Realms UI. Uh, by itself, this isn't too exciting. I couldn't get it to work on my realm. Uh, it's having all sorts of issues. However, uh, something new that they're introducing is the ability to have a timeline on your realm. Based on the wording of this particular message about how it shows like different players, it's not a timeline in the social media sense of the word, like I first assumed, but instead it shows you when different players have been on. So you can see, for example, the bottom players only visit on Friday, and you can use that information to synchronize with your friends without having to ask them, hey, when are you gonna be on? You can just see what times and what days they go on there, so you can see who's on daily and who you have to look for to more. This is a fun feature. It feels the tiniest bit spooky, but I personally think if I was a multiplayer person, I would like that a lot more than the downside. Speaking of things I like more than the downsides, it's worth mentioning Minecraft has a brand new command in this update. This is something they are very big on doing for the Bedrock version. Uh, alongside a lot of the betas and updates, they often have updates to the editor. This is the editor mode that Minecraft Bedrock has, which is kind of like a world edit equivalent. And also, they bring in updates with new commands that are especially uh, useful for people making maps and this new one is called HUD. So slash HUD has two options. So you can uh, pick yourself and you can hide or you can reset any given element and so the head, uh, the HUD is the heads up display which is basic. Also I think I just hid all of my HUD by accident. <laughs> so you can hide it all by just uh, not selecting anything or you can specifically hide some parts of the heads up display. The heads up display is what is drawn over the Minecraft which is in the background and so this includes that text which is on the screen. This includes my character model on the top 
top left, my health bar, my hunger bar, and my hot bar over here. And so you can slowly remove this, and so you can force players, even playing in a full world, to not have any HUD whatsoever, just like so. As you can see, now I can just see and do things. So if you want to force players to do stuff without that, you can do so, which is fun. But you can also pick individual elements, so I can pick to hide only one thing, for example. I could hide the player's hunger, and now they- oh, well, apparently it- <laughs> apparently it doesn't work that way. Okay, let's reset, and then let's go hide, hunger, Okay, yeah, it just picks that whole thing all the time. But you would be able to hide just someone's hunger bar. I'll have to, um, you will have to imagine together what that looks like. Or you could hide just someone's health bar, or just someone's hot bar. Um, and I think this is a really fun option, and I don't see how it would be used. But also, the slash camera command didn't seem useful, but now it's one of the most incredible things that Minecraft has. So maybe this is the same, or maybe it's just a new option people are asking for. Either way, seems like a positive if you ask me. Although I have to say, it'd be a bit spooky to not have any idea why this was happening to you. <laughs> Speaking of spooky though, so there are three big questions that I haven't really answered so far in this video and now let's go through each of those. One of these is how good is the armadillo? Will I actually be using it in my survival world? Is it a worthwhile addition? And then finally, what about the crabs and the penguins? So first things first, I do think the armadillo is very cute and I love how easy it is to get these cute. I do think only one variant of wolf armor is a bit limited. I mean, if you compare it to horse armor, which which Minecraft themselves literally did, well you'll find there's four variants of horse armor, compare it to human armor and there's five variants, so not even having decorative variants feels a little weak. I think in terms of the Minecraft live implementation, this is exactly what we voted for, so that's fair I guess. Um, I would love to see them do more with it in the future, I'm hoping the fact that it has its own toggle means that they intend to, but right now uh, the spider eye uh, you know, feature is the best, and the fact that they're very cute and very easily obtainable are things I like about it a lot. Indeed, for my survival world, to move into the second question, I will be, you know, getting myself some scutes, if only to make a few pairs of wolf armor and then have them on my, you know, it's a, it's an interesting thing to do if you have a long-term survival world. Will it be a priority when I start a new one? No. Will it be something I even do if I happen to have the copper anyway? It's a fun thing that you can do, but it doesn't seem like a must-have for anyone, but that's how I would kind of rate this as a whole. The armadillo is not a must-have. It's a thing that when you find it might be nice if you want to protect your wolf anyway, and and so that raises the question of, well, couldn't crabs and penguins have been better? And yeah, I have to be honest with you, as someone who didn't think the armadillo was the best choice at Minecraft Live, I do have to say that I haven't changed my opinion, but after looking at the armadillo and seeing that it's cute, I'm like, yeah, well, that was kind of the point of the mob vote. You're getting a cute mob in the game, and if you see everything else as a bonus, then actually, I like the armadillo. I had zero excitement going into it, and now my excitement level is like a 10 out of 100 or something, I guess a 1 out of 10. We we went from 0 to 1 and that's a big improvement. I still do like the idea, it's just for me it's not going to make the biggest of impacts, but ultimately, you know, if you think about it, most of the mobs weren't going to, except, well, a penguin could have gone really handily in a boat and a crab could have allowed you to reach further, you might use those on a daily basis. This kind of confirms that you really won't be using wolf farmer on a daily basis, uh, but I do think there's going to be a category of players that are really excited by it, and for those people, you know, I'm excited for them. I love that this is a part of an update. Uh, however, now that we've finished uh, you know, uh, after the armadillo is finalized, I'm sure they've got more bug fixes that we'll see in the last snapshot of the year, if they do one next week, the last beta of the year next week. Um, but now that we've, uh, you know, seen uh, every single feature from this update show in a beta and preview, outside of bug fixing, which takes a few weeks, what's going to go on with the rest of the time? Because, you know, the next year, as soon as they're back from their holiday break, there are a lot of things that they can spend time on now, and one of those things is the armadillo, you know, they could add in the crab and the penguin. They they never say that those features are gone forever. I don't think this is the most likely. I think a lot of people can hope for that. Um, I do think that the update has a big set of unknowns, and one of my personal favorite ideas would be what if they use this to work on the combat? They're working on combat adventures. Why not work on the combat itself too? I also think they could expand these combat adventures to have a whole other structure, the size of the trial, size of the trial chambers. I think um, in the same way that I really think that the Caves and Cliffs update was a missed opportunity to add caves to the Never, like actual explorable ones, they could have done the same thing with, you know, at the end too, uh, but they could also do the same thing in this update and make nether trial chambers. I don't know if I think that's what they're going to, but we have a whole branch of the game now that they can explore and they can work on, and as long as it fits in combat and tinkering, it could be brand new food, it could be an entire uh, new system of combat, a new type of weapon. I love that they have this open space where we don't know what to expect, and based on last year's 
timing we won't know until somewhere in the uh, February sort of season. That is something that is very exciting. Uh, what am I expecting to see is a very broad question, but I'm hoping that it's something that helps define this update as not just a mid-sized, okay, it's cool to have, and when you find the features, they're cool, but hopefully this should be an update that makes you go, yeah, I need to play that right now, because that's what Mojang wants, that's what we all want, and I'm excited to maybe see that. For now, this has been your uh, weekly Minecraft news update. Uh, I hope that you have been enjoying uh, these so far. If you are curious as to what I've been up to and what I was doing just before I uh, recorded this video, I was actually uh, working on a brand new challenge uh, for Minecraft. You might uh, hear more about soon. Uh, I've been doing a few more challenges this month, so if you want to see beating Minecraft but with one item a day, or I started Minecraft in the Nearlands, I'll link those down below. They're some of my favorite uh, videos recently, and you can check them out, or you could not, and you can instead say, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I've been IBX Toy Cat, and I look forward to seeing you for a live stream tomorrow, the day after. Oh, it's also streamless. So yeah, lots going on if you want to check it out. But if you don't, that's cool too. All I care about is saying thank you very much for watching. I am looking forward to seeing what comes in the next uh, snapshot and set of previews. And I'm also excited that this came to Bedrock first. That never happens. Usually they delay things on Bedrock to make it match on Java. So uh, yeah, very curious as to their decision making process, but also curious as to what you think about the armadillo. So let me know down below because I'll see you next time. Goodbye. It's so cute. <laughs>